Officer's orders out. Fire. Bam. Got him to form up. Yikes. Off they go. That's what I like to see. Nice job, boys. Nice job, boys. Here we go. We got a counter charge for the Brits. Counter charge for the Brits. Looks like we're charging the square. <laughs> Mess. That they got to pull the guns through. Bumpity bump, bumpity bump. Corpses, wounded guys, guys that, I mean, they got to roll the guns over some of these guys. There's probably some dudes around here that are, they ain't dead yet. Hello, YouTube fans and friends, and welcome. I am your humble and gracious host, Bank 60s, and this is my ongoing playthrough of Norbsoft Dev's awesome 19th century combat simulation, Scourge of War Waterloo. In our last video, I decided to, once again, with new knowledge, game mastery, and experience, take on the challenge of pushing the Allied army off the battlefield at Waterloo and destroying it. Through a full two hours, 48 minutes of gripping Scourge of War combat action and maneuver, I must say, edited from my raw nine-hour playthrough, of course, we saw Napoleon's French army really steamroll over the opposing British and Dutch-Belgian forces, uh, despite their ridge and their fortified hamlets. It came at a hefty cost, though. More than 40,000 brave French souls were sacrificed on the field, the vast majority of whom fell victim to the horde of Prussian attackers from the east, that was a little bit of a surprise. Thankfully, Marshal Grouchy, another surprise. Voltre Mazenstein, I received the dispatch from Marshal Sewell this morning. My forces approached the field from the east. <gasps> Look at that. Grouchy has arrived. My goodness. Wow. Wow. From up here? Oh my, I've never seen that before. Wow. All, Grushi's entire army is here. Holy cow. Holy cow was able to arrive with all of his men and help Napoleon's army and mine finish the day with a victory. Uh, it ended with more than 56,000 enemy soldiers laid low, including more than half the British and Dutch Belgian army, which apart from its remaining Brunswicker and Orange Corps cavalry was mostly scattered to the wind. And of course, the road to Brussels was laid open. And I will tell you here that I've come upon an opportunity to continue this alternate history campaign with an epic clash at Brussels between what I will cast as the remainder of Napoleon's army versus a regrouping of Prussian forces. Uh, I must say, it's coming together beautifully so far, and I'm really looking forward to sharing that in the coming weeks. Uh, I'll be in the shop working, and I'll let you know, of course, if you like this content, please give it that thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, that helps. You YouTube gods are watching. And, of course, hit that bell notification so that you know when I drop that next vid. So this time around, I previewed it at the end of the prior episode. I kind of wanted to just take a look back at it. It was a lot, man. A lot. There was so much that happened. Uh, and it's just worth it, I think, to reflect. Uh, I would love to just share some of my thoughts as I watch back through important parts of it that I've arranged together all in one video and uh, just provide my reaction to what I was doing, what I was thinking, 
Um, anybody who watched it and might have doubted uh, its authenticity, uh, that was me sitting down and fighting that whole thing. Uh, and it honestly was only about the third time that I'd done that uh, as the French. And so a lot of what you hear from me was, I mean, you know, I was in the moment, I was doing the best I could to, as in my objectives, push the army off the field and destroy it. Uh, because in real life, that's what would really matter uh, at the end of the day. The objectives just help to guide you toward what military thinkers would consider as an important means to the to that end which is killing the other army that's what the objectives are there to tell you that yeah oh yes gosh i love looking back on this stuff the scale of it here's where i'm reminded folks about how slow a 19th century army often moves a hey, you know first of all i think it's really just important for me to um acknowledge uh the views that the video's gotten uh, in just a couple of weeks' time. Uh, that's really, really awesome. <laughs> uh, and I want to say thanks to anybody and everybody out there who decided that they wanted to take the time. And that's just... Uh, that's, why, that's why I do it, because I want to share. I want to share the experience of playing the game, of trying to kind of create at least a little taste of authentic history you might say alternate history as I have it here but to go forward and kind of you know recap what it was I was up to um, if you haven't watched the video you should uh, what a great battle it was I had control through just about all of it uh, and I went ahead and I decided to make my first objective license like you see here um, I wanted to as his uh, as history would tell and as Napoleon did uh, to try to control the central position on the field. You know, kind of like in chess when part of the battle is to try to, uh, or at least a key part of it is to control, you know, the middle four squares of the chessboard. That's kind of what Laissant was in my eyes. Uh, and I thought that it would be a, a vital place for us to at least start the advance. Different from history. Uh, that's kind of one thing that's unique about this game and this scenario. While it has its flaws, it's maybe not the best scenario in Scourge of War Waterloo, not the best written one. It allows you the most flexibility to change the course of historical events. Um, you could start the attack anywhere. I chose to start in the center. Uh, of course, you know, as you see here, got a little clever about it. Uh, went back, grabbed one of my guns. Uh, my skirmishers weren't quite getting the job done. Figured I'd save uh, my own lives and take more of theirs uh, to move the gun up within canister range. Uh, you know, just a little tactical advantage. I think that's fairly historic, of course. Uh, but again, the idea here was to take Laisson, have enough troops there in position to hold it, and see what happened next, right? Um, I knew that if I was able to coax the British troops off the ridge, I'd be able to counter with this cavalry back here, uh, along with all of the vaunted infantry that I already had uh, in place. And we went ahead, continued the advance, um, brought our skirmishers in here, had one battalion that did most of the work on it. Uh, this, I believe that's the 2nd Battalion, and I can't see uh, exactly what regiment they're a part of, but this battalion here uh, did the brunt of the fighting for Laissant pretty much all by themselves uh, at relatively minimal loss and maximal loss to the enemy. It wasn't too much of a, a problem for us. And then once, once we gain the advantage here around Laissant, uh, and, you know, that's kind of, I love that as commentary on the way that battle works, the way that 
uh, strategy works. Oftentimes, your opening moves are the most important ones. And here we catch up with the action later on. I've taken Lice on, and the British came down off the dang ridge. I was surprised by that. I did not orchestrate that. I did not know that they were going to do that. Uh, so I had to react. I brought up some 2nd Corps troops. You see that infantry. Uh, that's Bashloo's division up there fighting in the open fields. I'm bringing up some cavalry there to try to support them. Uh, that's what we have right here. This is another key moment in the battle, just kind of part of the opening stages of the fight, which helped tell the tale over the longer term. Uh, this was an important part to get right. Uh, we had some cool action when uh, I think it was Charlet's brigade, at least part of it, decided to sally forth out of Lyson, attack one of the counter-attacking British light infantry units of the KGL brigade. That was a fun, a fun thing to watch. And that was all AI, by the way. All the AI's doing. I had nothing to do with it. Uh, that's one thing in the way that I play uh, that I would encourage more and more and more is once you figure it out, the AI will just kind of do things for you a lot of the time. Uh, there's another moment, uh, well, there were several uh, across the entire span of time uh, in the battle where... You know, I didn't have my eyes on things. <laughs> the AI went ahead, like right here. Uh, I had Campy on a particular stance, you know, attack. Uh, I think, or no, I had him on hold here. So even then, there are enemies in front, and he wants to go attack them. And so he carries out his initiative. Uh, AI right here, moving this battalion maybe a little too close <laughs> for comfort. All of that having to do with the orders at the brigade level. And like I say, once you get that figured out in this game, you can just take this massive, epic thing and breathe life into it. Uh, I just enjoy the heck out of it, man. Here we are, Second Corps troops still, uh, you know, in the dogfight that I wanted with British troops to try to take that ridge top, but it's definitely tough sledding throughout. Uh, it certainly was, and we needed more cavalry support. We brought, uh, we brought that battalion that you see, or rather the brigade that I had clicked on. We we're looking for a spot to, uh, to put them here, I think. Yeah, right here. And uh, that cab really helped us out. A little, little more momentum in the attack in the center here. The idea being that once we control this center part of the battlefield where there was the hill, uh, we would have an advantage pretty much all the way across. And here's where we were able to gain more of that advantage with our cavalry available to attack over near Ugamal. And then now six Corps, as you can see right here, helping to drive further through the center uh, I wanted to set ourselves up. This is a key moment. We were forming up six core, getting them ready to make the big advance. As you can see, the fighting in front of them there. Make the big advance up onto the ridge. That was going to be our kind of coup de grace in that part of the battlefield. Uh, further support here for Lysant and its defense. We brought up another brigade to help out. Uh, and this was, uh, again, you know, maybe a couple hours into the battle right here as we're trying to take that ridge up there. Six Corps ended up moving forward, pushing the rest of the troops off that ridge. That was good. There's Six Corps getting itself all ready to go. I always like lining them up like that. Uh, that's kind of a me thing. I, I don't know. Um, feel free to comment. Over here uh, on the left, I had begun an advance toward... Oh, this isn't the left. This is this is way back in reserve. I'm still bringing up six court troops. That's right. And uh, bandying about what the heck to do about the Imperial Guard. <laughs> yeah, and you can see how the fight was going overall right there. Yeah, I, I remember this part. I was like, what do I do? What do I do with these guys? Because I'm always excited to use the French Imperial Guard. It's really more fun to play as the French if you're trying to 
you know, get the taste of victory and also because you get to use these guys. Uh, the Imperial Guard troops are definitely just better in all the ways. Continued pushing the Allied troops back away from Lysan and, and, you know, establishing our control of the central position on the battlefield. And you kind of see how we were moving forward in the center there. We started to move on Ugamal on the left after we had gained some momentum in the center against the British troops that had come down off the ridge. And we began, we began pushing over on the left, bringing up a little bit more cavalry over here over here another key moment in the battle it was a good decision for us to bring this cavalry up because we we were going to need it against all the high quality british cavalry that was you know it waiting in the wings back there near mont saint jean it's second core attack right here, kind of dwindling. This was before we launched six core. Now here we are over at Ugamal. And this was when I la actually launched the attack against Ugamal, I think. Yeah, this is where I ended up moving on this location right here. Yeah. We sent Jamin's brigade forward. Right here. Yeah, I remember this. And he was the first one to attack, and uh, what ended up happening with him is he went and he took Ugamal easily enough. But unfortunately, as you can see there in the Grog toolbar, if you're familiar with the game, he's on an all-out attack order, and he just went ahead and went through Ugamal and continued on maybe a little too far, <laughs> frankly. Um, it's just such an epic... Epic, epic thing, you know? Um, and then when you achieve this level of ability to control most of it or, you know, harness it, let's say, right? It's just fun to kind of, I mean, you can't just sit back and watch the entire time. You have to stay engaged. You have to understand where you need to get involved. You need to click take command. You need to click off of take command. Most importantly, you need to take command, uh, take units underneath commanders off take command so that you make sure they're reacting to protect themselves. But in moments like this right here, um, and, and this didn't end up working like I wanted it to, that's all the AI right there. Now, I might sometimes go ahead and grab the take command flag. Um, here we are with Bonaparte just kind of looking over the entire field. But sometimes within all that mess in there, they will find an opportunity where I think I could gain an advantage with one of my units. I'll go ahead, I'll zoom into them, I'll take command, and I'll carry out some charge or some other tactic or what have you. Here we have our uh, main cavalry force that was moving into the center after we'd kind of uh, topped the ridge, started bringing up artillery. We needed to make sure we had cavalry support up there ready to encounter... Uh, the high-quality British cavalry that was waiting back by Mont Saint-Jean. Here's what we had to solve that with. It was kind of fun. Yeah, big cavalry movement. I remember this part of the battle, too. This was fun. Again, you know, you're kind of moving things forward in historic style and formation like that. Man, I love that stuff. I bet you there's plenty of you out there that like that. Just the look of that. That's... that's you know, it's a, it's a little glitchy. It's it's a video game. That's understood. But, you know, it's kind of it's a little bit how it looked. It really is. This, this not so much maybe. But, um, again, I'm trying to breathe life in the present into what some of what was going on on the ground at the time. And uh, that's what I really hope that, that you take away from this is – a greater understanding and appreciation for what these fellas were doing out here, man. I remember the fight was just... At this point, it was fairly well in hand, frankly. Uh, I, I had a good feeling that I would achieve a major victory, most likely. Um, I wasn't, you know, obviously totally sure 
yet about one very important thing that you know will come up here in just a minute and if you haven't seen the whole video i certainly encourage you to go back watch the whole battle to see all the key moments but this was kind of where uh, we had brought up the cavalry to hold down the position in the center to help continue to keep the line strong in that place maybe set ourselves up for a push across the field i was considering of course just hanging out on the ridge and letting the artillery do most of the work for me but eventually it was a situation where uh, we kind of needed to keep pushing. We knew the, the Prussians were going to come right at us. That's what I'm reviewing right here, if I remember this right. I'm talking about all the different forces that I'll use to encounter the Prussians and fight the rest of the Allied Army. First Corps, all the cavalry back there, maybe even the Imperial Guard. Yeah, I'm kind of talking more about which forces I'm going to try to line up and use to fight the Prussians when they get on the field. We know they're coming. You know, we know they're coming. Plants and Wall was going to be a big key, of course. At least, you know. Uh, yeah, and then here we go. The cavalry action gets going in full and in earnest. Uh, I remember this portion of the battle pretty well. This is fun, too. A lot of AI control here, as you can see. And not a lot of take command on there. And now, sometimes with the AI in control, I'll still have them retreat or fall back. Like, I'm kind of, I think I did this right here. I had them go ahead and retreat. But you can see right here, we got another big melee that's going to get going over here. Uh, as I brought the cavalry forward and ordered them to attack, uh, ordered their commanders to push them into the attack and uh, this is what resulted uh, just a big <laughs> a big fun melee with all this really good British cavalry right here this was the biggest one of the entire battle I think uh, or one of I think two that were really 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 big melees and not even really big by historical standards there have been bigger ones in history here we have uh, I was I remember this too I was, st I was starting to feel a little unsure about the success of our cavalry against theirs, and here was the heavy cav of the guard, uh, and I decided it would be best for me to go ahead and bring them up too. I remember this. Their artillery first, and then the, the horsemen themselves, because this part of the line just wasn't as strong. Yeah, more of this cavalry action right here. Yeah, we were starting to, I was starting to sweat it a little bit. We'd kind of run off most of the British cavalry at this point, but there was still plenty of Dutch-Belgian cav back there that was fairly decent uh, that I was still a little bit worried about. I remember that. Oh, yeah, right here. Swirling melees back and forth, kind of like it was in history. I swear, you know, the folks who make this game, they could refine it just a little bit, improve the graphics a bit, you know, try to make it so that it'll run on most computers, but... Man, they've got it. They have captured the epic scale of these battles and of the Napoleonic period right here. Uh, there could just be some refinements made to make things a little bit better, a little more realistic. But this is, uh, this is really great stuff. I was having a lot of fun with it. And then here we go. Yep, uh, right here we found out about uh, the Prussians. Or no. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's right. We found out about the Prussians right here in the midst of our cavalry action and bringing up the guard cav. I remember this well. We were kind of scrambling to, uh, you know, shift attention, basically. We were going to – I selected all the different officers, make sure I had them on the right stances, the, the ones I wanted them to, not too aggressive to get their guys, you know, to preserve their strength. Uh, but here we had the Prussians – coming down they're gonna be coming out of these woods toward Plansonois and uh, we got ourselves set up to uh, repel them of course that was another key moment We used cavalry to do it for the most part. Oh, 
there was one part of the line that I kind of – here we go. Yeah, this was the fight on the right. Yeah, I remember this. This is after the Prussians had come on. Things were getting heated. Some cavalry had already mixed it up. They'd brought their infantry forward right here, and I was – deeply involved in getting the defense organized and kind of pushing back, really. Um, Prussians are the army in this game that is the one that I think can kind of match Napoleon a little and the French army a little better. Uh, if it's, you know, weaker in numbers. And so I was pretty worried about this Prussian threat. And at this point, of course, there was no guarantee that uh, reinforcements from Grouchy were going to be coming on. Uh, so I was just scrambling to try to fight this fight as best I could, make the uh, you know stances the right way, make the orders the right way, uh, and then get involved by taking command in all the spots where I should. Here we are. Our cavalry is, uh, yeah, forcing one of their guys to surrender. I remember that. That was a good moment. Uh, it, not a necessarily a pivotal moment per se, but... All little moments like that are really fun. Uh, and just an incredibly epic battle over here on the right that continued through uh, the rest of the afternoon and into the evening hours. Here we had the Young Guard with the help of their cavalry, the uh, Young Guard cav that was moving up on the far right through these woods here. This is kind of fun. Uh, I believe that this is rather historic. Um, I don't. I haven't. I'm not really all that well read. I, I know the. I know a lot of the basics about how to use cavalry, and I figured that this would be a decent way to go about formation control. It's just kind of, you know, ride them through the, the no man's land between the infantry fire lines uh, to get the enemy troops scared into square. And uh, I did a lot of this throughout the battle with my cavalry forces. And here's an example of where I'm taking command, right? I'm not letting the AI control this part. I'm going to go ahead and do it myself uh, because I know I think tactically this will just help us out. Over here, I remember, I think the young guard was kind of was hard-pressed at this point. All these Prussian troops outnumbered them. Uh, and the guard, the young guard troops that I had pushing over here had kind of been fighting for a little while, and so this cavalry support was really, really important for them. Uh, this Prussian side of the fight uh, really became the focus. By this point in the battle, I'd kind of pushed the British troops back off of their ridge uh, almost entirely, and it was more of a mop-up with them. Uh, over here was where the, the real fighting was going on. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, he's excited about when we move the guard forward. Another pivotal moment in the battle, if you want to call it that. This is kind of the guard beginning mop-up duty, is what I would say. Uh, we we had the allies kind of on the ropes, up all over the ridge, headed toward Mont St. John. We were going to go ahead and finish the job, man. A little bit more of that use of cavalry over here on the right flank to try to exhibit some formation control. You can see it right there. As we continued to uh, fight this fight over here, I mean, it was, look, you can see, just terrible. Prussians didn't stop coming, man. They just kept coming. I was doing decent over here. There's some AI-controlled stuff going on that makes sense with the cavalry over here, far right with the infantry. That all looks, you know, all possible, all doable within the game. Big charge was coming here. These are always a lot of fun. Uh, you know, when you get the opportunity, you happen to catch it. You're in the middle of the, the battle overlooking so many things. You can come in here and... I didn't even take command. I just ordered them to charge. And, uh, yeah, there we have it. Off they go. 
Uh, I wanted to try to continue. I took command to try to continue. They weren't going to go because, yep, they were too tired. I didn't see. And here was the big news. Of course, Grouchy is on the field. And this was when I knew. Uh, I kind of already was confident of victory, but this is when I knew it was pretty much uh, a mop-up for the most part. Uh, certainly was excited. I think I remember raising my voice a bit in glee. <laughs> and there was Grouchy coming on from up there, which I'd never seen. I'd never seen Grouchy come on up that uh, on that part of the battlefield before, uh, indicating, I guess, that he fought through the troops at Vavra and continued on the road. But there was his whole army in all its grandeur there to help me win the day. And uh, they certainly, certainly did. <laughs> As you can see here, uh, his troops helped come down, kind of uh, slice through the Allied center, take Plants and Wa, and finish the battle off for us. So right here, uh, this is a little surprising. The Allied forces between all Anglo, Dutch, and Prussian troops have only 18,318 effective fighting men left. I have more than 26,000, almost 27,000. And I would say that that would equal a crushing defeat indeed. However, the problem is Bulo's Corps of Prussians. So they would combine, and I bet you there'd still be about, as you can see, they've suffered 15,000. So, I mean, there would still be damn near 16,000 troops to fight with in this corps. A fine, strong corps all by itself. And then you'd have the remnants of the other army, 1st, 3rd, and 2nd Corps all together. They could still for, form a force of 60,000 or more troops, most likely, that Napoleon would probably have to deal with. Now, there's all kinds of what-ifs, right? What if Napoleon had time to attract Rapp's Corps, which would add another, say, 10,000 or so, maybe 20,000 troops to his army before maybe a final climactic battle with the Prussians. But it looks like in our little alternate history retelling here at the outcome of Waterloo in our version, the Prussians would have enough to remain a problem for French forces. So that's interesting. So yeah, once again, I want to say thank you for taking the time to look back with me on what was for me a really cool experience. Uh, I was really glad I got a chance to uh, go through that whole thing and share it with you here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel. Big help if you do. Hit that bell notification to find out the next time I drop a video. I'm looking forward to continuing this alternate history campaign with Napoleon's army facing what's left of at least a portion of the Prussian forces in Brussels. That's what I want to bring you next. It'll be exciting. I can't wait. I'll see you in the next one. Later.